poetic lyrics affected your life? Is there something you remember in your life in specific or did it? Uh, it has to do with his uh, uh, morals, uh, his uh, morals about uh, being vegetarian, his morals, not that I am, but he has this uh, very sensitive uh, way of uh, talking about life, okay. which, which can be so thrilling, you know. And this is for me a real artist, you know, so when I heard that something is going to happen with Morrissey, there's no doubt I'm coming, you know. I was about to go to see his concert, but I just came back from New York, so it didn't work out. But, uh, that's the way it is. Morrissey, I would fly to see him in the... Um... So you would say you're definitely a fan? Yeah, yeah. And how long have you been listening to Morrissey? Since I was 17. What's your favorite song from him? There's, there's there are so them. many. Uh, um, Hateful Follow the old album. Mm -hmm. is, uh, Meet is Murder is an excellent, excellent, excellent yeah. album. Uh, the Queen is Dead. I'm talking about Mo uh, Morrissey and the Smith. Right, the Smith. It's, it's all conjure, you know. It's all uh, combined for me. But uh, whenever he comes out with a new album, I have to check it out. It's Morrissey and it's the Smith. kind of upbeat, this like music a lot of the songs do. Yeah, you listen closer and the lyrics are actually pretty dark and fatalistic a lot of them. Why does that appeal to us so much? I, I think people who can see the, I guess, uh, less light sides of life or are maybe even more inclined to dwell on the deeper elements there, I think they latch on to that and I think that's part of the appeal. It's not just throwaway. Um, you know, bubblegum pop kind of stuff. You know, it's kind of like the darker things that you really think about when you're, you know, awake at 6 a.m. in the morning and you realize you haven't paid your bills and, you know, life is falling apart. I think, uh, I used to listen to more and sing the Smiths when they came out in the 80s. And so basically when I was in middle school, high school, and college, um, back when he wasn't maybe as well known, and I guess he still isn't to a certain extent in popular culture. And I just found him kind of a comfort because um, I was sort of an artistic, uh, sensitive person, shall we say. And uh, I didn't quite grow up in an environment where that was appreciated or accepted. So in other words, the crowd at school that was in, behind the, uh, the gym smoking cigarettes. That was the Smiths, the Morrissey, the Cure folks wearing black and that sort of like uh, culture. The Gothic? I, yes. <laughs> Uh, former covering goth myself, um, and so that's what I found in his work was that it was just very comforting to know that there was someone out there as sensitive as I was. Do you remember the first time you heard the Morrison or the Smiths? You said you saw them in a concert. Yes, Tell yes. me about the concert. In my opinion, he wasn't the type of guy that you'd go to a concert to, like you know, to bang your heads or anything. So I remember I told my friend, hey, let's, let's grab a drink. And so we went to the back. And just listening to the music, I, I really enjoy that, you know. I think he's more of like, like if, if I was to go somewhere and sit down and talk to somebody or just listen to that. Me personally, I'm getting a different vibe from the painting he's doing from what I'm seeing. And you know him a lot better yeah. than I do. Do you feel that in what he's painting up there today? I, I will give you a, a striking example of just how the music would affect his painting. And I, I talked about it with another member of the audience who was standing near me. Um, I noticed when he came in, he came into the song The Cleanest Dead. And I noticed that the first two colors he used were deeper in tones of green, like a deep green, right. emerald green, um, which is curiously enough, the dominant color on the cover of the Queen of Stead, which oh, okay. is the exact song he was playing. Good insight. I like and I that. and I completely clicked with it immediately and I said, okay, this is the song that's playing. He's using these colors. I could literally feel myself uh, the influence of the music on him as he was working. There's a light that never goes out. Because when I was in the Navy and I was depressed, I listened to that song and just cry my eyes out. Like it like defined what I was going through and like it, it's the only song I can really think of to like sum up all my emotions. You can hear uh, songs that he wrote for thousands of times. You're right. You think you're so right. I just don't see why this should be so. If you're rich and you're
remember the first time that you heard Morrissey or the Smiths? Yes, I do. Um, it was Reel Around the Fountain, the first song I had heard. And uh, the, just the simplicity and the honesty of the lyrics just, just blew me away. Um, <laughs> I dreamt about you last night and I fell out of bed twice. I just loved that much. <laughs> Have you seen... Uh... Morrissey or the Smiths live? Uh, many times. I've seen Morrissey live uh, a dozen times. No, half a dozen times, sorry. And uh, Smiths was a little bit out of my range. Uh, Smiths didn't play too many widespread in the U.S. states yeah, at the time I was I, coming in. I did read that in the biography. <laughs> yes, exactly. He so, wasn't really as popular in the U.S. So it went solo. No, no. He had, yeah, uh, Smiths was a smaller <laughs> fan base, and certainly where we grew up in Texas, he didn't play remotely near the towns we, we grew up in, me and Sean. Um, so we didn't get to see the Smiths per se. I have seen Morrissey half a dozen times and it's been great and I've been lucky enough to uh, enter, to meet him and, and the rest of the band. You actually met him? Yeah, it, it took years but I eventually met all of the Smiths and, you know, had my moments with them. I like the colors. outside your house. I wasn't there to kill you or anything or rob you. I just wanted to meet you, dude, because we're fanatics. 